Hello, my name is Scott Crockett, and we've created a power generating bicycle. We use the same concept as a wind turbine and incorporated the design to our bike. Now the way it works is, as you pedal the bicycle, the constant changing magnetic field produces the flow of electrons. This flow of electrons is alternating current. We then use a bridge rectifier to convert this alternating current to direct current so that it can be stored into a battery bank for future use. Oh, sorry, I was supposed to go to that slide. Now, the reason why we designed this is because we both like to exercise. We realize there's so much energy being wasted throughout gyms worldwide, so why not create a way to generate this energy while improving your physical health and the environment at the same time? Now, in order to calculate the maximum amount of power for each bike, we use the maximum power transfer theorem. And now, now this is done by determining the internal resistance and matching it with the load resistance. And after a few calculations, we then determine each bike produces approximately 170 watts per hour. Now we put together a, oh, and by the way, uh, those sine waves down there, that's, that's our three phase output, and that's uh, on the oscilloscope. <clears throat> and we put together our videos um, so you get a further understanding of the generator. We began by tracing the rotor onto a poster board. Since we decided to go with a 9 coil stator for our generator, we had to divide the rotor into 12 equal parts for the 12 magnets. The placement of the magnets around the rotor was determined by the outside diameter of the coils. We then had to build a coil winder using our coil's dimensions. We calculated the coil size based off the 1.5 inch diameter of the magnet. The coil's inside diameter is the diameter of our magnets and the thickness is to be the radius of the magnet. Each coil has 70 turns with 14 gauge wire. This schematic shows the connection of the coils in a star configuration. Each coil is color coded. One set represents one phase, making this a three phase output. In preparation of the soldering, we then place the coils in the star configuration, making sure the coil windings are in the same direction and that one phase is directly over three magnets. This phase being the coils marked with black tape. Next, we had to burn the enamel coating off the copper wire so that a good connection can be made when soldering. We then check the resistance to clarify the coils have equal resistance. After the soldering, it is now time to cast our resin stator and a template we had cut out earlier. Carefully pouring the resin so that no air pockets are formed, allowing 24 hours for the resin to cure. Now, it was time to weld. Welding the hub to the rotor. This took a lot of precision because it directly affects the rotation. Once the first rotor was welded, it was now time to assemble our generator. Assembling the rotor so that the magnet's polarities are opposite so that they attract each other, which allows the strongest magnetic flux to cut through the coils. There's no turning back once the last rotor is welded, so we used the bolt holes on the rotor to be sure the rotors were aligned properly. Good evening, my name is Alex Pastelion. Now, at the video ending, you might be thinking, what kind of potential do we have with this product? Well, we have already concluded that we could produce a total of 170 watts per bike. Therefore, if we conducted six one hour cycling classes for 30 days with 30 bikes, we could produce a total of 900, 
918 kilowatt hours. So what does this mean? Well, according to U.S. Energy Department, we the national the average house produce consumes a total of 901 kilowatt hours per month. So we have the capability actually to power a house for the whole month. Now, project's cost. We have determined, we have demonstrated the value of this product and we could compare the cost to other products. Now, to estimate the cost, we came to be a total of $500, which includes the stator, the rotor, and a bike. Now, let's take a look at other machines, other gym machines. Well, we can clearly see that we are well below the average. Improvements. Well, if we had the opportunity, opportunity to do any improvements, we would buy more cost-efficient rollers, which are smaller and lighter. To increase the power, we would actually add more magnets and stronger magnets. Also add more portals and more turns and also larger e cores in the middle. And also change the gear ratio. Issues. Well, during the project, we plan not once, not twice, but maybe 10 times and measure maybe 20 times. So we didn't really run into any issues when putting together the generator. The only issue we had was actually the second stator which we decided to epoxy on a cold weather, which caused a cure issue. Lesson learned, we didn't use that stator. We actually had to do a brand new stator. But other than that, we didn't really have any issues. And before I start with the questions, can I have a round of applause for Oleg and all the teachers? Because without one, Yes, it does. Uh, currently, uh, we actually reach on the DC side approximately 27 volts up to 30 at times, and that's paneling with our hand. So, you want to try? Do a demonstration. As you can see here, as I start paneling, the displays come on. And then once this inverter takes on the light comes on. And I can see both DC and AC voltage on the bar. So we also included a little racetrack that you can actually race each other using both lights. So if anybody wants to race anybody near you, you can always race them after you're finished. That's all. Any more questions? Yeah, we, I mean, we've come across like the ideas of like everything in the gym, we feel like can be turned into something, you know, all the mechanical energy is wasted. So we, we, we have some ideas. Um.